Uh, I, I guess I'll start with you, Troy. Yeah, yeah. Just give me an idea of your your background in terms of. Do you come from a two family household? Is it is it is is it a one family household? What was it like coming up in the Millens family? Yeah, man. So my parents are from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. Um, moved to to the states, uh, the Bronx to be specific. Uh, so I was born into to the South Bronx. Uh, story, yeah. Shout out to everybody on Story, yeah. Colgate, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, early on they decided that uh, moving out of the Bronx would be the best. Uh, for me and my brothers, and so we came to Westchester, and um, you know we grew up in a in a in a tr- traditional West Indian family. Like it was like strict rules, and you you know you're gonna be a doctor, you're gonna be a lawyer, and if you're not gonna be those things, good luck. Um, and so I watched my parents work hard my whole life, um, but I never really knew what they did as far as work. I just knew they worked hard, um, and so like that was something that was instilled in me. Like just work hard, work hard, work hard, and the benefits will will be reaped from that work. Got you. And interestingly enough, you are now uh, an entrepreneur and we'll get, I don't know if this is your first entrepreneurial endeavor, but you know, most West Indian families, it's not necessarily promoted. It's, it's not big to be yeah. entrepreneurs. They want you to be doctors, lawyers, or something to, to that effect. Like you being an entrepreneur, is, did you get the support or is it now that it's moving? They're like, okay, you know, I can rock with you. Yeah, my, my, my parents are high on anxiety. And so anything that's outside of the norm, it's like, good luck, we're praying for you. Um, so the, <laughs> that, that's the type of support that they gave. It's like, oh, I don't know what you're doing. It's kind of the roles have reversed, right? Like they don't really know what's going on, but they just know I'm doing something that's good, mm-hmm. uh, which is how I grew up watching them. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that they went to work. Um, but yeah, man, I, I remember <laughs> when I realized I wasn't going to be a doctor or a lawyer, I was like, I got to figure something out. And the first thing I wanted to be was a masseuse. <laughs> for something like I was good with my hands and um my dad was like I ain't paying to to for you to go to school to be a masseuse like go find something else and so I had to think quick I was like damn I knew I wasn't gonna be an athlete like Shadi is an athlete I was like I'm not gonna get paid from doing that and so I love sports so much I was like look I might want to help people recover from injuries in sports and so it, I went into PT and um I quickly realized that PT wasn't gonna be the, the answer they were taking like five people out of the, the program to make it to the grad school program and I was like Nah, man, my grades, I was older than the grades I was getting. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> this, this ain't gonna be the route. And so naturally every summer we were working with kids. And so I took my love for sports and my love for kids working with them. And I decided like, yo, I'm gonna I'm a do phys ed. And so I chose to be a phys ed teacher. And so like, that's what we would, that's what I was doing full time. Um, but in the summers, I was running a program um, for kids in my community. Uh, it was like a summer internship program. And I was like, look, this program, I want to treat it like the, 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 what kids don't get in 10 months of school, I want to give it to them in six weeks. And uh, one of the things that was, was part of that was financial literacy. So I, I called my brother, I'm like, yo, I got this thing I'm about to start. What you think about teaching like financial literacy? Cause I know he was just starting his career. And uh, he was like, you know, I ain't, you know I, I'm not the biggest fan of like going back to school. Cause we, we do the program in our old high school. Um, but once he saw the impact that it was having, he was like, yo, yeah, let's go with this. And so like that that's how this all came about. Wow. Dope story. Uh, you know, before I dive deep into that, Rashad, you, I mean, and, and, and I keep hearing him referring to you as shoddy. I'm like, yo, who's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Rashad, like what was your growing up situation? Uh, two family household, was education pushed? Um, within your house, within your household, was it all about um, entrepreneurship? Yeah, a combination of both. I mean, our stories is kind of similar as, as far as our original beginnings in the Bronx. So I come from a, a, a huge family um, on my mother's side, and uh, all my family is from the Bronx, Harlem, and um, that's why I started in my grandmother's house uptown on Gun Hill. And um, you know, like a lot of people. My my parents, fortunately, they were together. It wasn't a single parent. It was, you know, they stayed together. So they were able to have enough resources to move out of the Bronx. And we moved. That's how I met Troy. We grew up in the same neighborhood up here in Westchester. And um, it's an interesting dynamic growing up here because a lot of times people when think of Westchester, it's like rich, affluent neighborhoods. And it's like where we come from, Greenberg, is like a true middle class, like working class black neighborhood, like almost probably 80, 90% of the people are, are black people and um, working class, like, you know, like um, sanitation workers, school teachers, people like that. And you got, you know, the have nods as well, but 
so my, my mom was a teacher, public school teacher. So education was extremely important. And uh, my dad was always an entrepreneur. So <clears throat> that's something that was always encouraged in my household early on business, business and, um, you know, do for self. Like my parents, they come out of the nation of Islam. That was like real big in the, in the New York back in the sixties. So like, you know, especially my dad, that was something that he always instilled in us was like the do for yourself and never let anybody else feed you things of that nature. That's something that was like real big in their teachings um, when they was coming up. So, you know, they, they taught that to us. So that was something that was always in my brain as far as like the entrepreneur spirit and business and being able to provide for yourself and your family, things of that nature. I just wasn't exactly sure what area of business I wanted to go into, but I knew I always wanted to do business my whole entire life. So, um, yeah, it was like, you know, after playing sports, you know, that was something that I thought I, I could make a living out of playing basketball. Like, I, you know, that's what I did pretty much my whole entire life up until the end of college. And once I realized that, you know, the hoop dreams was over, I wasn't going to make it to the NBA. I had to figure something out. So, um, you know, I tried my hat at a commission job being a financial advisor. And um, at that time, you know, it was, it's, it's still kind of a, a situation where you can get hired relatively easy to be a financial advisor, especially if it's commission based because they're not paying you. You got to make it through, you know, just commissions and 90% of the people don't make it. So fortunately, I was one of the 10% that actually did make it and, um, you know, got licensed, um, you know, life insurance, uh, retirement plans, 401ks. Um, college savings. So Troy is actually my first client that I ever had in that. And, um, you know, our, our, our worlds just kind of merged because, you know, me building my career as a financial advisor, and he was a teacher at the time, as he said, you know, um, financial literacy, it kind of just came together when I started, you know, going to his classroom, teaching financial literacy. And then he, he taught me how to, you know, teach and be a teacher. So those two worlds kind of merged together and, kind of was the birth of what we have now. What 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 you major in 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 college? For sure. Communication. Communication. So I was the first so my first school that I went to UNBC University of Maryland Baltimore County. I was there for 2 years. And um you know I was an athlete, you know I had a basketball scholarship. So my my real objective was I always wanted to do business but I also I didn't like school. So I wanted to kind of have the easiest path to be eligible and the easiest path to you know get a college degree. So at the time American Studies was my first um, major. And then I transferred to um, University of Hawaii. And when I went to Hawaii for my last two years, they didn't have American studies. So the closest thing that they had to American studies where I can transfer a lot of my credits over was communications. So um, yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I have a degree in communications. Okay. So, you know, now I see, and again, I, I'm really big as you guys know on this I don't believe any experience we ever go through in life is wasted. I, I, I'm strong on pushing trust the process. Now it makes a lot of sense speaking to you guys because I didn't know your background in full, but one's a teacher, others a financial advisor. Because I always want, how did you come into doing what you do now? But you were perfectly set up to introduce this this business world that you guys have introduced, I mean, well, I'm saying it wrong, but this this whole business curriculum uh, platform that you've introduced to the world in EYL. So now yeah. it makes perfect sense. Did you guys went, went in? I want to talk, um, Troy. You mentioned kind of the birth of of EYL. Where did first and foremost, where did that name come from? <laughs> so um at the time um he was starting his uh financial advising career on social media and so he was like yo he came to like me and our partner mike he was like yo i need like a hashtag um to go with my campaign and, like we were shooting like clips of him like we had like this whole little movie we made for him and i was like yo i got one and he was like what i'm like yo earn your leisure i'm like it's perfect because here in greenberg everybody thinks that you know, we've had everything made for us. They don't realize the hard work that we had to put in, to, you know, going to school at night, working two jobs, working on Saturdays and Sunday. Nobody sees that part. They just see the end result. They don't know that everything's been earned. And mm -hmm. I was like, yo, every, so like when they see us go to on vacations, when they see us in South Beach and Cancun, they're like, yo, these guys been living, but they don't know the hard work we had to do to get that freedom. And so I was like, yo, earn your leisure. That's it. And he was like, 
nah, not feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> he was not, he was like, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, nah, that's it, bro. I'm telling you, that's the one. And so he started using it and um, like, it kind of caught on. Like it was his hashtag, like it belonged to him. And so uh, you, you want to tell the rest of that? Yeah, and um, before even that though, I mean, it was a, a situation where it was, you know, I wanted to become um, a figure on social media for financial. I, I, I thought that I could become like, you know, a financial guru on social media. I wanted to write a book, I wanted to have the whole thing. And um, for years, I wanted to do this for years and just kind of never really got around to actually doing it. You know, a lot of different reasons, I guess, you know, I'm not sure why, but uh, another friend of ours, Val Valencia. So she's a teacher in Baltimore, but she's from Greenberg too, she's from our neighborhood. And um, she became huge on, on social media. She used to teach, she used to um, tape herself teaching classrooms in Baltimore and um, put it on Instagram. And um, it made like Shade Room, BT, ABC News. Like she became, she blew up. Rihanna followed her. Everybody, all these celebrities was following her. Like everybody was just like, she just became like a celebrity. So seeing her, and this is like a friend of mine. I'm like, I, if she can do it, I know I can do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um, I took I took her success as inspiration and motivation. So, like Troy said, when we sat down with my other partner Mike a few years ago, I'm like, yeah, I wanna I wanna become a celebrity on social media, and we put together a whole campaign to actually you know become a name on social media before Earn Your Leisure. And um, as I was growing my own personal brand on social media, you know, needed a hashtag because everybody has a hashtag or a slogan. So yeah, Troy came up with Earn Your Leisure as a hashtag and I started using that. And um, at the time I really didn't like it, uh, but everybody like caught on to it. They was like, what is Earn Your Leisure? Is it like a network marketing <laughs> company? Like, it was just like, and it was just a hashtag I was just putting on all my pictures and like people was like, yo, this, what is it? Like what's Earn Your Leisure? And I stopped using it for a while. And then another one of my friends, Shout out to Spanx, he uh, hit me like, yo, why you stop using Earn Your Leisure? I'm like, you liked it? He's like, yeah, that was dope. So I started using it again. So then when it was time to start the podcast, which the original point of the podcast was really just to keep growing my own personal brand. We didn't know it was going to take off the way it did. Um, we was coming up with different names. Actually, the first name that I wanted to do was a bad boy named Money, Power, Respect. <laughs> um, my mom's a bad boy too, man, I think of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite Biggie lines. I was like, nah. Thumb rappers need teaching. I just like the double entendre there. I was like, yeah, uh -huh. thumb rappers need teaching. I'm like, yo, that's it. And he was like, nah, man, you're gonna alienate people. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we can't use that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we figured, you know, Earn Your Leisure was something that we had originally. Money, power, respect. You know, I'm pretty sure that's copywritten and we have to pay puff for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we was like, you know what, man, nobody's ever used Earn Your Leisure. We already have that. Let's just run with that. And, um, it's been been rocking and rolling ever since. How how many followers did you have on your personal um, Instagram before you started the, the the podcast? Well, when I first started the whole campaign, I had five hundred, and then I grew it to like I think thirty thousand. By the time we started Earn Your Leisure, it was like thirty or forty thousand on my own personal page before we started Earn Your Leisure's page. Okay, so you were set up. Just doing what you did, putting the hashtag out there, you had 30, 40,000 people who were already following you, already uh, familiar with that hashtag. So moving it over was pretty seamless. Yeah, it's easy. And I tell people all the time, like it's, it's easier to build one page off another page or one brand off another brand. So, you know, it definitely helped that I had 30,000, 40,000 followers because now we're not starting from zero. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it took a couple of years for me to get 30,000 followers, but it took a couple of months for Earn Your Leisure to get to that same number because now it's one plateau is already built. Mm -hmm. So now it's just a matter of cross promotion. And then, you know, once there's enough people, then it, it just works on itself. Yeah. Um, which is some advice that I always give a lot of people starting a podcast or starting a platform is you might want to build your own personal brand before you have a podcast or a platform first and then piggyback mm -hmm. off of that because now it's a lot easier to move people in the direction of a brand if they can already identify with the individual. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.